Yeah. So just quickly, let's talk about, we're going to talk specifically again about 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90. So let's start with the first one you're going to see on the unit circle, and that is a 30, 60, 90. So, huh? Get a data sure, let's do it. Let's make it official. So, um, <laughs> I don't know what you just said, but it was probably funny. So, um, yeah, so today is 828, right? And what we're learning about today is this whole idea of sine and cosine. And, um, we won't probably address tangent today. There's no probably about it. It didn't, it didn't happen in today, but sine and cosine are fully spelled out like that. You know that on your calculator screen, they are of course abbreviated as sin and cos. So sine is abbreviated. And uh, I don't think you probably will almost never see me write out the full word sine again. So sine on your calculator is the sin and then cosine is of course the COS, right? But we're not going to need our calculators, and that's the beauty of studying these 16 awesome angles on the unit circle, is that we memorize them. It familiarizes us with like the, the guts of trigonometry and how this, how this all works. Once we leave and we go to awkward angles, then we start employing some technology, uh, but we still understand like the underlying structure of it. So today we're learning about sine and cosine, and we're going to learn why, as we travel around the unit circle, why the sine and cosine values are what they are. So here's what we know about our unit circle. We know from yesterday, and you're probably feeling a little overwhelmed, but we know this from yesterday that all the triangles we're dealing with have a radius of one or a hypotenuse of one, right? Because if you think about it, like if this triangle and this, pardon the sketch you're about to see, do not try this at home. Uh, if this was part of a circle like this, uh, that didn't come out nearly as bad as I thought it would. You would agree that based on the location, like if this is the center of the circle right here, we know we're working with a one unit radius, right? So that's why throughout the lessons today and whenever we're always working with a hypotenuse of one, because the hypotenuse will be the radius of the circle. So having said that, this is a, it was just really, how did I do that? Like a robot. This is a 30 degree angle. And so, um, it's a pi over six or a 30 degree angle. To bring it back to your geometry days, do you guys remember what sine and cosine even are? Do you remember the cute little saying, right? The so ka toa, right? So we're not gonna talk about toa today, but we are gonna talk about um, so and ka. So the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. That's the so. And the cosine of any angle in a right triangle like this is equal to the length of the adjacent side also divided by the hypotenuse. I'm sure Mr. Manlov showed it to you just like this in geometry, so ka toa. <clears throat> so what I'm interested in is the um, these two sides here. God oh, bless you. I'm interested in this side and I'm interested in this side because I can't complete my sine and cosine ratios until I know those, right? I, like I need the opposite to do the sine for O over H and I need the adjacent to do cosine for the Ka. Uh, but we learned yesterday, I, I threw the note card away, but this is what we did yesterday. When we have a special 30, 60, 90 triangle and the hypotenuse is one, who can tell me what the length of this purple side is? You know this, it's a half. That'll be our, That'll be a value on our unit circle soon. What is the length of this green side down here? It is root three over two. Correct. Now, the beauty of the unit circle is that it has a radius of one. And so if we talk about sine and cosine as fractions, which we do, sine is literally a ratio, a fraction. It is built by taking the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. If I wanted to find the sine, this is where it happens. Here it goes. Here it goes. Welcome to the next two weeks. If I want the sine of 30 degrees, I don't need a calculator for it. I have a triangle for it. I take the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And what's one half divided by one? One half. So we can now state 
that the sine of 30 degrees is one half. Yep. Nice. One down, lots to go. Now let's study the cosine of that same angle. Let's stay at the 30 degree angle. And I'm very specifically talking about this purple angle down here in the corner. So if my arm of my unit circle has moved up 30 degrees, I'm fixated on this point on the unit circle right out here, right? It's 30 degrees or he's pi over six and we're trying to find his sine and cosine values. So his sine is 30, oh, excuse, his sine is a half. Um, how do you find a cosine? <laughs> You do adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I want to know the cosine of 30 degrees, again, I don't need a calculator because I know with special triangles, I already know what the numbers are. It's adjacent over hypotenuse. But the rad part about this is that with the hypotenuse being one, this whole idea of dividing by one, you would agree, is really stupid, right? And herein lies the beauty of it, is if, if the radius or the hypotenuse is always going to be one, here it goes, then you can say that this red length is the cosine. The cosine generally cannot be cheated like this. You can't just go in and fudge it and say the cosine is that side, but you sure can when the side that it would be divided by is a one. So the cosine of any of these triangles is just the horizontal leg. And we can take it even further and we can say, well, then by the same logic, this green line is the sign. From this point on now for the next 15 minutes, as we travel around the unit circle, we're going to understand now that the cosine is simply the horizontal distance to the point and the sine is simply the vertical distance to the point. The artists formerly known as the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are now known as the cosine and the sine. How am I doing, Coop? Okay. So let's fill something in so we can feel like we just spent some time. Grab your unit circles out. And we, oh, I got a little mess here. I'm gonna, you guys and my, they're pretty much the same. We're all going to go over here to this angle because that, I, I hope you see this, but do you agree that that is a 30, 60, 90 triangle? God, I hope so. So if it's up to you, if that will help you, then yes. But if you keep trying to draw all the triangles, you're going to vandalize the dickens out of this thing. That's okay. We'll make more. It's okay. So here's your 30, 60, 90 triangle. And that now leads us to the conclusion that at the angle 30 degrees or pi over six, the cosine, a.k.a. like the x, the first coordinate, is root 3 over 2. It's literally the x coordinate. It's how far to the right that I have to go to get there. And again, we're only getting away with this crap because the hypotenuse is 1. Dividing by 1 is like, yes, I don't actually have to do anything. What's the sine at pi over 6? Uh -huh. Yes. So there are your first two cosine and sine values. I know. Let's do the same thing again, but let's change it from a 30, 60, 90. Let's change it into a 45, 45, 90. So now, and again, I'm going to orient my triangle in a very particular way so that it matches with how we would see it on a unit circle. So this triangle is not intended to be longer than it is tall. It's not intended to be taller than it is long. It's a perfect right isosceles triangle. So we're going to encounter this triangle pretty soon into our journey around the unit circle, right? This angle down here is 45 degrees or pi over four if you prefer. What is the length of that side? It is one. It will continue to be one. It's what makes this tick. If that side is one, we know from our note cards yesterday, what is the length of these two sides? Nice job. Way to use those resources. Root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. And I think I can give you a more abbreviated explanation of this this time. But you understand, again, that the cosine doesn't need to be thought of as some complex division problem. It's something divided by freaking 1. 
Where can I find the cosine of this angle? Right there. That's the cosine. It's adjacent divided by hypotenuse. It's root 2 over 2 divided by 1, which is root 2 over 2. Done. End of story. Where's the sine of this angle found? The vertical mm -hmm. leg. This is the sine. This is going to continue to be the case. And I'm going to quit drawing these triangles very soon. But we realize that in the triangles, the legs are just the sine and the cosine values. Just remember that the cosine is the horizontal and that the sine is the vertical. So let's head back to our unit circle. And let's head up to pi over 4 or 45 degrees. We can go back and forth on that for a while. So we're now at this angle here. And you see the triangle. There's the hypotenuse of 1. There's a leg. And there's a leg. You see these awesome triangles just tucked all over the circle hiding out. The radius, the hypotenuse is, of course, one. What's the cosine at 45 degrees? Nice. And what's the sine? Perfect. It's nice to have that isosceles triangle because the cosine and sine are exactly the same. Now, as we stay in quadrant one and we head to the next stop, do you guys remember the name of the next stop? Degrees or radians? Definitely 60 degrees. Anyone remember this guy in radians? Pi. Nice job. He's pi over three. So now let's talk without me going to the other page and redrawing the whole thing. If, bless you. If I just sketch the triangle kind of half-heartedly on this page, there's, there's our guy. We know him. We saw him just a minute ago, but he was flat and now he's tall, right? What is the cosine? Cosine is sideways. Sine is vertical. Is cosine, is cosine a short journey, a medium journey, or a long journey? It's a short. And what is our short journey? Then your cosine is one half. It's pretty cool. And I can't wait till you see like the curves and how this all happens. It's cool that as you go from the, from the 30 to the 60, the cosine and the sine literally just change positions. It's rad. Wait, I can't wait for you to see like the cosine and sine curves and how they like it, it, it kind of snake and serpent off of each other. So cool. And it happens because of the circle. What's the, what's the sine over here at 60 degrees? Nice. And before we head into quadrant two, let's finish off quadrant one. I'm sorry that I neglected this, but if you understand now that cosine is horizontal and sine is vertical, you can answer the following question. This angle down here, greeny. What angle is that? You can call it zero. Fine. Call it two pi. Call it 360. I don't care. What's the cosine? It's a hard question. What did you say? It's one. You're going to get this stuck in your head. Cosine is all horizontal. Cosine is the journey that I make from the left to the right or the right to the left. It's all horizontal. And you agree that to get to that angle, there is no triangle, is there? That angle is all cosine. So the cosine at zero is one. What's the sign? Correct mundo. Finally, let's head to the top of the circle. And we're going to see again that juxtaposition. We're going to see that whereas zero was all cosine, no sine, what's 90 going to be? Yeah. All sine, no cosine, right? So when I head up here to the top, I'll switch colors. When I head up here to pi over two, 90 degrees, whatever, I realize now I have no cosine. There's no horizontal movement to get there, but there is all vertical one. So zero and one are the cosine and the sine. It's pretty rad how they just change positions. Now, in our last couple minutes, let's just screw around a little bit in quadrant two, and we'll wrap this up tomorrow. As I head into quadrant two, what changes? I have to start thinking in terms of negatives. So okay. like, for example, if I stop right here at two pi over three, or what call it whatever, 120, if I stop there, Cosine, short, long, or medium. Aiden nailed it. It's a short journey. The cosine is short, but I'm going to the dang left, so it's a negative. So my cosine at 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. What's my sine? 
same. You're going to keep seeing these numbers. It, now, when we go to tangent and cotangent, the, the numbers are going to change because we have to start flipping things over and stuff. But when we're doing sines and cosines around the unit circle, your answer will be one of five things. You will hit a zero or a one or a one half or a root two over two or a root three over two. All answers will be that as we finish off the circle. You're either... Right. It's negative for the cosine because we're going left, but then positive for the sine because we're going up. What can we say about the sine and the cosine in quadrant three? They're both going to be negative because we got to go left and down. And what can we say about the sine and the cosine in quadrant four? Positive cosine, negative sine, right? How you feeling? I hope you feel better about the unit circle than you did 45 minutes so ago. Exactly negative right. We'll conclude this activity at the start of class tomorrow. We're going to get all of our signs and cosines in. I'm going to get you another knowledge check. I'm going to get you. Uh, so I'm going to point at you and circle one. And I want you to know what it is. So try to maybe go home tonight and study those angles and get your pi over fours and two pi over whatever's. Get all that figured out. Okay.